So now let's start to write out our code. I'm going to delete this line here. It's not needed. It was for your reference only. And we're going to start by writing out our directives. Remember the directives, they help the compiler compile the code in a particular way. We're going to start by hitting four tabs. One, two, three, four. And then we start with the first directive. It should be written in caps. Area and then tab, vertical line, dot, txt and this directive here makes our code callable from a c code a code written in c and we add the other directive the cod this tells the compiler to place the following line in the code space which is usually the rom and comma let's just make it read only to save this way and let's align align it equals to now, we could tell the compiler that our code is written in thumb, T-U-M-B for thumb, and then we export our program, we export our program, and we're going to call, let's call our program main, so we export main. And you know what the export directive does? It makes this program uh, this program callable from other other programs. So this file, the content of this file, can be called from other files. And you know the dot text makes it callable to C files, but export makes it callable to assembly files and C files. And the dot text would not work without the export main. So now our program is main. So we export in main. So now let's write out our program. We start by main. The first thing we're going to do is initialize our pot and pin. And we're going to do this by writing a subroutine to do that for us. And remember the, the BL is branch to subroutine. We're going to use the BL opcode to do this. And we're going to call this first subroutine GPIOF in it as the name implies it's going to initialize the general purpose input output port f gpio f in it and remember we want to turn on the red led and we realized when we checked in the data sheets that the red led is connected to port f pin one so that's the one we have to initialize for our initialization we are going to use something known as index and immediate addressing index addressing uses two or requires two registers one register points to a value and the value pointed to by this first register is then put into the second register and we do these two steps by using the ldr the load opcode immediate addressing uses the move opcode to move a value into a register so first, as we said, we have to activate the clock of pot F here. That's the first thing we have to do. And the third, uh, number three, we have to set the direction registers and then enable. Remember, we're not doing this one here because we're not using PD7. So what we are going to do now is write out the content of our subroutine. Our subroutine is called GPIO F init. So what we're going to do is load, load the address of the clock into register one and we do this by calling ldr r1 because system control rcgc gpio underscore r remember addresses are 32 bit large numbers here load r1 equals system control rc gc gpior is pointing to the address i should tell you the name here system control rc gc gpior is a name you could think of it as a name we've given to the numeric value of the address would we'll, later on we would see how we assign this name to that 32 bit number but for now keep this name and i'll explain to you why we're using this long name with underscores rather than getting a simple name that we can remember so let's move on 
Now we have R1 pointing to the address of the system control register, which is the clock register. Now we have to take the content at this address and put it into R0. And we do that by invoking LDR R0 comma square bracket R1. So now the content at this address pointed to by R1 is put into R0. If you go back to the data sheet, you will realize that the reset value of the system control RC GC GPIO register is 0x0000 with eight zeros after the X. Currently, I'll tell you this value is put into R0. So R0 currently has this value. In order to enable port F, we will have to enable bit 5 in the system control RCGC GPIO register. And we can accomplish this by using something known as the OR operator, like this OR R R0 equals R0 and number 20. Here, we say in R0 equals R0 or 0x20. To further elaborate this, let's take a break from U-Vision and see how this OR operation changes the bit.